God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining us for Sunday School on Saturday. We bless and thank God for another opportunity just to share uh, our Sunday School lesson with you to be able to come into your homes, uh, whatever capacity, you, whether you're viewing us from or listening to us. We appreciate you and appreciate your taking out the time uh, to join us for Sunday School on Saturday. And tonight we have a beautiful lesson that we're going to be um, discussing. And our lesson tonight is Lesson 10, Forgiven as God's People. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we're so grateful, thankful, and appreciative, dear Lord, for everything you have done, for every mountain that you brought us over, every challenge, God, every disappointment, everything that you have allowed to transition in our lives, we are just thankful. Now, as we prepare to enter into your word, God, into this Sunday school lesson, we ask that you would increase our understanding, broaden our knowledge, open up our hearts, and let us have receptive mind and receptive spirit to what you are saying to us at this time in the name of Jesus. And we shall praise you, magnify you, and give you the glory and the honor for these and other blessings are we asking now in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgiven as God's people. Our Bible truth says, as people of God, living in harmony with others is important. Now, we need to be able to get along. That's just the bottom line. We need to be able to get along. If we can't get along with people, uh, then our existence really uh, is nullified in that we cannot get along with anybody. Isn't that amazing how some folk can't get along with themselves? Why you say that, Pastor? They can't get along with themselves. They'll be at home and they'll get mad at themselves. They'll talk to themselves and they'll start answering questions. Amen. Then they'll get mad with themselves at home. Now, if you can't live with yourself at home, if you can't be by yourself without getting mad, that all let you know you can't live with nobody else. So as people of God, though, we ought to be able to live in harmony with others. We ought to be at peace, not only with ourselves, but with those around us. The scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14, to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, if people are going to see the Lord, as I've taught before, if people are going to see the Lord, they must see the Lord in you. Because you, my dears, my sirs, you are an example or should be an example of what the Lord is calling for in these last and evil days. Now, our memory verse, and our memory verse comes out of Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 through 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave therefore thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So Jesus was letting us know the importance of forgiveness, the importance of reconciliation, the importance of being able to forgive people, to let go of things and not allow things to have a grip on you. That's important, beloved, that we know how to let go of things, how to let go of the past, how to let go of what people have done to us, how to let go of people that have hurt us. Because the Bible says in the book of Philippians, Paul says these words, I am forgetting those things which are behind and I press toward the mark of the prize of the higher call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, as believers, we must continue to press toward the mark. The aim of this lesson, we want to discuss the beauty and the wonder of love in a committed relationship, reflect on our attitude about love and commitment, and explain explain how to build a relationship that honors a marital commitment. Now, if you're going to be married, that means you have to forgive in the marriage. There, is, there can be no marriage, there can be no relationship unless forgiveness is in that relationship. There can be no happy home unless forgiveness is there. As people of God, we must learn how to let go of grudges, not hold on to the past, not hold on to the things of yesteryear or last year. Amen. But we let go and let God. Our lesson scripture tonight comes out of the book of Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. Now, when you read that, 
you'll find out that there are some biblical definitions that we want to discuss here tonight. One is to fulfill and the other is to be reconciled. What does fulfill mean? Fulfill means to accomplish or complete something. And reconcile means to be con con uh, conciliated, cause the nature of a broken relationship to change. So, if your relationship is broken with your children, if your relationship is broken with your spouse, if your relationship is broken with your God, you need to be reconciled in that relationship. That is, that things must change. There must be a change in you. Let's see what Light on the Word says. On the heels of the triumphant victory in the wilderness, Jesus begins his public ministry. His fame spread rapidly, due in part to Jesus' a stunning power to heal various diseases. While the multitudes followed Jesus to receive healing, many of the religious leaders shunned commitment to him or his teaching. They did not stop that this did not stop Jesus from healing, teaching, and preaching God's word to others. Now, there is a danger, beloved. And not forgiven. What is the danger of not forgiving? It is quite dangerous for us not to forgive. We are responsible to make sure that we don't tempt our brother to sin by leaving conflicts unresolved. We must do everything in our power to eradicate the poison of resentment from our lives as well as the lives of others. Our faithfulness to do so is far more important than even the most solemn act of worship. So then, before I praise God, before I worship God, I must first be reconciled unto my brother and unto my sister. There's no need of me rejoicing in the church and rejoicing in the Lord if I have unforgiveness that's harboring in my heart. I must learn how to eradicate, how to get rid of this unforgiveness and how to forgive people for what they have done to me, how to forgive them for how they have wronged me. Sometimes we just make things about us when it's not necessarily all about you. But as children of God, we've got to learn how to forgive. There is a secret to forgiving. And there's also... There are also consequences for holding on to things. When you hold on to bitterness and you hold on to unforgiveness and you hold on to strife and you hold on to resentment or jealousy, anything, that's a, anything that is a work of the flesh, then you will find yourself, amen, becoming a prisoner to those things. And I don't know about you, but I refuse to be a prison, a prisoner, amen, to my flesh. I refuse to be a prisoner to unforgiveness. I refuse to be a prisoner to the things that are in my life. Why? Because there is therefore, now the scripture says this, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, Jesus understood this because he had a he had an obedience to God. What was his obedience to God? Let's look at Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, Jesus obeyed God the Father. In that he said, I have not come to destroy the law, but I've come to fulfill the law. What do you mean fulfill the law? I am here to do what the Lord has commanded me to do. I'm here to fulfill the word of God. I'm here to fulfill the prophecies that have been spoken down through the centuries. So I didn't come to destroy that which you believe in, but I came to fulfill it. Now you got to understand something. I've said before and I'll say it again. The only thing that most of us Christians got from Jesus coming was Christianity. And he came to bring us more than Christianity. He came to bring us more than a religion. I may have lost some of y'all right there. But let me say it again. The only thing many Christians got from Jesus coming was Christianity. They got a religion. But Jesus did not come to bring us a religion. He came to bring us life. The Bible says and that we might have it life more abundantly. And the only way to completely and fully enjoy life, the only way to walk in love, the only way, praise God, to enjoy what God has for us down here on this earth 
is that we walk in forgiveness, that we walk in love, and that we do not harbor ill feelings toward our brothers or sisters. If you do that, praise God. If you walk in love and learn how to uh, love those that hate you, you pray for those who despitefully use you. If you learn how to seek God and learn, amen, how to call upon the Lord, can I tell you, praise God, you will find yourself walking in a different dimension. You will find yourself living on another level. Why? Because you've become obedient to the word of God and you've now learned how to forgive others, you've now learned how to forgive those who have things against you. So Jesus had an obedience to God. Jesus prepares his listeners for what he is about to say by explaining that his teaching does not destroy, but rather fulfill the Old Testament. The Greek word translated destroy in other contexts mean to dissolve, disunite, subvert, demolish, here, it means to do away with, annul, make invalid, to fulfill the law and prophets. Then it would be to uphold the laws of the Old Testament and to bring to fulfillment their messianic and kingdom prophecies. Now, his purpose was finished. He said, now, when I get here, I didn't just come to, I didn't come here to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill the law. I've came, amen, that you can, that you can see, praise God, that there's more to the kingdom of God than what meets the eye. There's more to me than what you see. I and my father, Jesus said, we are one. Since we are one, praise God. Oh my God. He said, I do the works. I do the will of him. Hallelujah. That sent me. When you understand that Jesus only came to fulfill the word of God. Now we said in John, John writes these words. John said, and the word was made flesh. And the word dwelt among us. And the word became flesh, praise God. The word, amen, became the living flesh. When when the word of God came down here to man, praise God, because if man were to reach God, it took God to reach man, not man reaching God. So what God did, what God sent Jesus, the Bible said in that what the flesh could not do, in that it was weak, God sending his only son, my God, in the likeness of sin for flesh, and for sin condemned sin, while he yet in the flesh. Now, what is the perfect sacrifice? Oh my God. The law exacted punishment for sin, but also provided a system of sacrifices for unintentional and intentional sin. The sacrifices of animals, however, could not completely atone for sin. It only foreshadowed the atonement of Jesus Christ. For Jesus fulfilling the law meant becoming the sacrificial lamb slain for humankind's sin, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Beholding Jesus the next day, John see Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. His was the only one-time sacrifice that completely fulfilled the law. Now, he said, I'm fulfilling the law in that there must be a sacrifice for sin. Now, how am I fulfilling the law? I'm fulfilling the law by laying down my life. Jesus said these words, no man can take my life, but I lay my life down. Why do you lay your life down? I lay my life down and give it as a ransom for many. Aren't you glad that he laid his life down? Aren't you glad that he died on the cross? Aren't you glad that he bled, he suffered, and he died for your sins and for my sins? And he gave himself as a ransom for us all. Now, when we look in the word, we see hypocrisy is condemned. Amen. In Matthew 5 and 19, whosoever therefore should break one of these least commandments and should teach men so, he should be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever should do and teach them, the same should be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into 
the kingdom of heaven. Now, I want to show you something, praise God. Jesus said this, but whosoever should do and teach them. What do you mean do and teach them? If you do the word of God and teach the word of God, that debukes the myth, that debukes the popular saying, don't do as I do, but do as I say do. No, if I'm going to preach the word, then I myself must be an example of what I preach. I myself must be an example of what I teach. That's why Paul could write to us in the book of Corinthians. He said these words. He said, after I have preached to others, I then have to bring my body under subjection, lest I myself become a castaway of that which I have preached. So Paul said, I'm just not preaching unto you just to be preaching or just to be sounding good, but I'm preaching unto you after I finish preaching to you. The same sermon that I preach to you, I then have to turn around and go preach it to myself. But I've got to preach it to myself higher. Why? Harder because I'm held in a higher esteem. Because if I'm ministering the word of God, that means my life has to come up to where the word is. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I can't just minister the word of God, amen, and not have my life as a living example. But I myself have become an example of what the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. I myself have become an example of what the Lord told me to do. I myself, I become a living sacrifice. That's why Paul again writes in Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now it is your reasonable service. It is our reasonable service that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, not as a dead sacrifice, not as a dead lamb, not as a dead animal, but as a living sacrifice. And you know, a sacrifice is killed. So that's why I've got to die. That's why the apostle Paul wrote again in Galatians. He said, I die daily. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it is the Christ, the God that liveth in me. My God, my God, my God. When we understand, amen, what Jesus said here, he said that you, whosoever should do and teach them. So we've got to not only teach the word of God, but we must do the word of God. We've got to do what the Bible says. If the Bible said it, he was talking to you. He was talking to me. He was talking to all of us. We've got to do what the word says. And then Jesus said this uh, if I, in verse number 20, I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom kingdom of heaven. Now, you got to understand what righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Well, a good example of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees can be found in Luke chapter 18. Let's go there real quick. Let's look at Luke chapter 18, and we're going to begin reading, oh my God, at verse number one. This is what it says. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, saying that men ought always to pray and not to faint, uh, saying that there was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was in the wood of a city uh, that she came to him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But after what he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this woman troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saying, said. Now look at verse number nine. And he spoke this prayer, but unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Do you see the irony in this? That they were righteous and despised others. One of the worst things you ever want to see is saved people can't stand one another. Let me say that again. It's bad to be saved, but you can't stand your brother or your sister. It's bad to be saved and you can't stand folk in the same congregation with you. It's bad to be saved and say you're saved and you can't get along with nobody but yourself. And you can't even get along with yourself half the time. Amen. But he spoke a parable unto them that trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. You can't be saved going around hating folk. You can't be saved going around disliking folk. You can't be saved going around talking 
talking about, folk. Amen. The Bible said this in verse 10, two men went up into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. Now notice now, Jesus said that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee uh -huh, and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Notice now, he didn't pray to God, he prayed with himself. That's how most people are, they'll pray with themselves. Amen, they'll pray, they ain't praying to God, they praying for you to hear him and hear all their words that they saying. He prayed thus with himself. Now, you can't be praying with yourself. I ain't praying with myself, amen. I get up early at six o'clock, 5.30, amen. Whatever time we get, we have prayer, we have prayer at six o'clock, Monday through Friday, I'm just not praying with myself, amen. Amen. Been doing it for the last several years. I'm just not praying with myself. I'm praying to God. I could be asleep at six o'clock. Amen. Praise God. I can still be asleep. You can still be asleep. Those that join us on the prayer line, this same number y'all called in tonight. Amen. Those that join us, praise. we can still be asleep, but we're not praying to ourselves. We're talking it over with Jesus. Amen. We're having a prayer. We're having some prayer time with the Lord. It's important that we pray. It's important that we seek God. The Bible said this man stood and prayed with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Extortioners, oh my God, I ain't got that much time. Extortioners, unjust, adulterous, or even as this publican. He said this, I, I fast twice in the week and I give tithes of all that I possess. And I said number time that this man that was praying with himself had a lot of us beat. The Bible said he give tithe of all that he possessed. Now, some of us give tithe of some of the stuff we possess. We don't give tithe of all that we possess. We give tithe of some of the stuff we possess. But this man said, I give tithe of all that I possess. Yeah, my God. And, and he said, I fast twice a week. When was the last time you fasted? When was the last time you pushed back your plate? When was the last time you saw God? When was the last time you denied yourself? Can I talk to somebody up in here? When was the last time you really went out seeking God? Amen. You pushed back the plate and you denied the flesh and you denied yourself saying, God, here I am. I need you to bless me. I need you to help me. God, I need you to do something for me. When was the last time that happened in your life? Amen. Praise God. And the Bible said that we've got our righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. We've got to go further than what they went. They spent hours a day studying the law. They spent hours a day studying the word of God. How much time do you spend studying? How much time do you spend in prayer? And we've got, and they fast twice a week. We got to exceed what they did. Jesus said, except our righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter in the kingdom of heaven. Now, we can't be a hypocrite. Amen. Don't be no hypocrite. My God, let me tell you, don't be a hypocrite. Oh, my God. In Jesus' day, the Pharisees and scribes were the epitome of hypocrisy. One On one occasion, Jesus said, but war unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, but ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Ironically, amen, they accused Jesus of hypocrisy because Jesus ate with known sinners, offered compassion to tax collectors and harlots, and associated with non-Jews. Amen. But Jesus, my God, the consequence of a living in deliberate violation of God's law is being called least in the kingdom of heaven. What God wants is not to display a display of religious behavior that impresses others, but our wholehearted submission to his will. It is impossible to rise to greatness in God's eyes without a firm commitment to look to total obedience. Amen. The scribes and Pharisees were some of the spiritual elite of Jesus' day. The scribes were part, were the expert teachers and interpreters of the law. The Pharisees were a Jewish religious party whose names come from the Aramic meaning separated. Among other things, they attempted to distinguish themselves um, uh, with obedience to the law. 
However, they also added human tradition to the laws of God and modified God's law through their interpretations and traditions because their lives were so dominated uh, by conformity to their religious rules, they were highly regarded by the Jewish people for the outward appearance of righteousness. Jesus' statement that our righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees would have shocked his audience. Most of his hearers would have assumed that if anyone could make it into heaven, uh, on the basis of their good works, it would be the Pharisees. Doubtless, they would have thought, if even the Pharisees aren't good enough, is there any hope for the rest of us? But Jesus' point is that not that we must do more than the Pharisees, but their, their righteousness is not true righteousness. Sometimes people just doing things for a show. Amen. But you got to realize you just can't do nothing for a show. Amen. In the Bible, we need to learn how not to be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Jesus' life and ministry proved that the law requires more than outward obedience. It requires a change of heart. Evidenced by authentic living, free from hypocrisy, this kind of lifestyle promotes reconciliation, allowing us to exist harmoniously with others. Jesus warned, take heed and beware of the leaving of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. He later helped the disciples, amen, understand that yeast referred to the false teaching among the Pharisees and Sadducees. A small but assisted, a small amount could rise and spread. Oh, thank God, thank God. When you understand, amen, you cannot be a hypocrite. Now, then we must live harmoniously, amen, praise God, with our neighbors, with our brothers, our sisters. Look what the Bible says in Matthew 5 and 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, 5 and 21 through 26. Get a chance to read it. I'm almost out of time. Amen. But what do we do? Harmonious living. The sixth commandment prohibited murder. Strict adherence to the law taught that the commandment referred to killing a person. Jesus, however, helped listeners to understand that the spirit of the law meant more, much more. For example, anger is akin to murder and it has its own consequences. On another occasion, Jesus explained, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, and blasphemies. Amen. Now, when we understand that we must have the right thing in our heart, that's why Jesus said in the Beatitudes on the Mount, he said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In other words, amen, blessed are those that have the right motives. Sometimes people will come to you with wrong motives. They'll give you information or misinformation with the wrong motive. They'll tell you stuff with the wrong motive. But blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Listen, I don't have enough time to finish this lesson. I, I hope that all of you have your Sunday school books. Amen. I want you to go in and finish this lesson. Praise God. Finish studying this lesson because this is a beautiful lesson tonight. But I know it's only so long y'all going to listen to me. Some of y'all are probably watching TV right now. You're arguing with your little grandchildren. You're, some of y'all watching the ball game and listening to me at the same time. I don't know how y'all multitasking like that, but I can feel it. If I were to take this mute button off now, amen, or Sister Vesta, take this mute button off now, ain't no telling what all kind of noise we hear. Praise God. We hear all kind of noise, but thank God everybody's on mute. Amen. And y'all can't unmute. You. Well, amen. You know, everybody's on mute and we can't hear what's going on in your home. Praise God. But uh, we hope that you we have your undivided attention. And as we've had your undivided attention throughout this lesson. Listen, I love you. Ain't a thing you can do about it. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you now. Oh, amen. Before I pray, let me see if we have any questions. Let me pause. See if we have any questions. Well, I know when we took the phone, I've heard all kind of noise. Amen. I know we did. I just I just know. I can feel it in the spirit. I know we heard all kind of noise and some of everything was going on. Some of y'all probably laughed. Show was past the show was. I know it was. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. Except your righteousness shall exceed the Pharisees. You shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. The Pharisees paid attention. Surely you can too. Praise God. We thank God for this lesson tonight and thank God for all of you. We're going to continue to keep you lifted up in prayer. Let's be praying one for the other. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Our convocation, 
amen, has already begun, I believe. Uh, no, it's going to start this week. Yeah, our convocation will begin, I believe, later on this week. Amen. Uh, yeah, it's going to begin later on this week. Amen. And we want you to join, amen, the convocation every night, www.kojic.com, uh, kojic.org, any one of those platforms. Amen. You'll be able to uh, see our convocation and see the capping of our uh, newly appointed jurisdictional uh, supervisor designate, Mother Perla Jenkins. And you'll be able to see um, the consecration of the new bishops, amen, and just a host of things that are going on in the church of God in Christ. So we encourage you, amen, to uh, convocate with us. Let's go to the convocation every night. We understand that it's not in person this year, that it, amen. But however, we have so much that's going on, amen, still. And COVID has done a number on the church. It's done a number on the body of Christ. But we are continuing, amen, to press on in Christ and to prevail. Well, we thank God for this lesson. We thank God for each of you. We pray tonight that you certainly have been encouraged. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the lesson tonight. We thank you for your people. Now, Lord, look on us. Uh, God, continue to help us to be forgiven as people of God. Help us to forgive those who wronged us, Lord, to do everything that you would have for us to do, to be reconciled unto our brothers and our sisters in the name of Jesus. And we shall praise and magnify you, give you glory and honor. For these and other blessings do we ask now in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Well, friends, be sure to join us next week, same time, same place. Until the end, be blessed is my prayer for you. And have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the evening. God bless you. Thank you for watching Zion Temple Ministries. Be sure to tune in to worship with us via Facebook Live and YouTube each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook Live Stream and every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday night teaching Bible study. You can also check out our worship opportunities by visiting our website at www.ztministriestn.com. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you soon.